Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And um, we are back for another review, Real Housewives Potomac, Season 8, Episode 19. And this is Reunion Part 1. Oh, we're almost over. We're almost done with the season. We're almost done. We're almost done. So happy. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, side note, so this reunion part one, I did not watch the uncensored version because I, I just really want to get through this, <laughs> I'll be honest. And I don't know if I'm going to see anything extra from watching on Peacock versus watching on Bravo. So this is going to be the Bravo version of it. Anyway, so the ladies are slowly gracing the stage and the shade is real. Like it's a child is crazy. So Giselle shows up first because she always does, but she's confused about the seating because she's not seated next to um, Andy. And she, you could tell she had this look of botheredness slightly, but she tried to hide it, but we can see it. And um, so then everyone's kind of getting there like slowly. And um, so once, so the show starts right away. And I believe this is only going to be two part reunion. Thank God. Because I also overheard that um, they had to hurry up and rush things along because of, I think, um, something else was going on at the same time of them needing to use a studio space. Like, something else needed to happen with the studio space, so they had to hurry up and um, get things moving. Um, anyway. So, Andy and his pleasantri pleasantries with the ladies was also shady, um, for the most part. Um, he's being friendly, but then he asks the, he asks Ashley about the divorce and under, under, um, Mia under her breath is like, yeah, I'll be getting a divorce before Ashley does. <laughs> and the plan of this reunion or the. Agenda of the reunion is to forgive and move forward. And child, whew, do did do we think we're gonna get conflict resolution? Be honest. Okay, yeah, exactly. Anyway, so next. So the first the first um segment that they kind of go over is the fact that all the ladies pretty much can. Seem to the only time all the ladies seem to get along is when they're talking about sex, because Andy basically states in this reunion. So before they go into the segment, Andy does say in this reunion that this was hard to watch because the fact that no one was getting along, there was a huge divide, and um, he asked everyone's if everyone's willing to move forward. And I think you all saw the preview, but if you haven't. Everyone pretty much says they're willing to move forward, except for Giselle and Robin Khan got forced into saying that they will. Um, and so this whole entire part one of the reunion, the clear problem of this show exposes itself the whole entire time. And I mean, just in case y'all weren't watching, let's call a thing. Giselle and Robert have been the problem of this show. And it's sad when you watch this reunion that everyone else is in the United Front for the most part, except for them two. They're in United Front with each other, but not everyone else has each other's back. And it's at the point where the other ladies, even like Naneka, it's having people's back and holding their feet to the fire. And Karen ain't riding the fence anymore. Karen is calling a thing a thing. And we know when we know where Wendy stands with all this. Ashley, we forgot she was even there. I didn't even know she was there. I mean, if I wanted to shorten this reunion, I could just say that just and just like, okay, that's it. But that's pretty much kind of what the reunion was, to be honest. But we, I'll go, I'll, I'll play along, I'll go more into it more. Um, because more did happen, but it's just, 
more of the same toxic BS though. So basically, again, sex, they're all smiling, talking about it. And then Andy does ask, well, did anyone take um, Robin's lead about regarding swallowing? Find out Mia took the lead. And she's swallowing her new, her boyfriend's um, things. You know, the kids. <laughs> and then from there, they go into the Robin and Juan segment. And it's still more of the same. Robin's making all these excuses for Juan. And we find out real quickly Juan's not the reunion. And the ladies are all calling it out, including Andy, because Andy shades her right away. He's like, well, Rob doesn't have a basketball game. Why is he not here? And even Ashley's like, you know, even because Andy's like, hey, you've had this before when uh, Michael wasn't coming to the reunions. And she's like, yeah, because he didn't want to face the fire. He didn't want to deal with the fire. But after... You know, he cheated on me. He was here. He was here for the reunion right after that. And, you know, Wendy's like, as he should. And literally, same thing with Juan. As he should. But again, Juan is doing what Juan does. And that's not showing up for Robin. But she's okay with that. We can't be mad. We can't be more upset with her. We can't be more upset about Robin and Juan's situation than Robin's upset about it. Because she clearly isn't. Because she doesn't care. Anyway. So from there, we... Um, so in regards to that, though, Candace, Wendy, Andy, and Karen pretty much are all getting Robin together. And I think Robin should have known at this point in time she no longer has a job. Because it was a pile on, to be honest, when it came to like how Robin was trying to tap dance around everything. And she's still trying to say that she didn't do this, she didn't do that. And they're like, girl, you are a lie. And then Robin tries to, so then Robin's messy blog friend asked question, sent a question to the reunion for them to ask Candace. And Candace is like, I'm not answering that question from your messy blog friend. You did all these things to me when it came to this blog friend. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deal with that. And Robin's like, no, I didn't. Shaw, why did <laughs> someone is always going to have a rock? And this time it was Candace. Candace had these. This was how large the she had like literally like the text messages on a large like cardboard thing. But she literally had the receipts. I mean, they're there. And then, and basically showing that Robin was even talking about um, Giselle and how she was upset that Giselle exposed her and all that stuff when it came to the Juan situation. And then because Thing one cannot think without thing two. They're like, oh, we knew about that already. I knew about that. Of course, they're still doing their unite front that they knew about it and everything's fine. We don't care. And it's just kind of like, okay, I see where this is going. It's going to be Robin and Giselle versus... Tr they're trying to make it worse versus Can Candace. But... This whole entire time, this first part of the union, they were not prepared, prepared for Candace has backup for once. It's not what they are so used to because Karen is no longer riding this fence. She has gone off the fence. She's like, girl, right is right and wrong is wrong. And then it, even Mia is sick of it. Mia's like, it's so, it's, it's getting to the point where it's just kind of like, all the other ladies clearly want to move forward, except for you two. Anyway, then from here it goes to the Candace and Robin situation. And um, while Candace, so they're going over their friendship and where, where it stays. 
And Candace asked for a Kleenex again because we know Candace is going to cry. She's a crier. And Giselle is being a complete biatch about the whole thing. She's like, oh, she's crying again and doing this laugh and all this. And like, what kills me is I don't think Giselle or Robin be knowing how they look. I think they think they're doing something and they're like, oh, they're, they're the, the girls and it's not giving what they think it's giving. And even Karen's like, you're being really mean right now, Giselle. What is this? And by the way, this wasn't even about Giselle. Giselle was just laughing at her, though. And that's why it came off as like you're literally laughing at her. And Mia even tries to intervene to stay to like Robin, like, stay kind of translate for both of them what's needed because neither of them are really saying what needs to happen and Mia's like let me let me kind of hear me let me help let me help Robin needs you Candace to take some some type of accountability self-accountability when it came to like your part in this and Robin Candace needs you to be transparent because you're not being transparent and me and pretty much summed it up for me. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. And so then from there, the next segment is the Karen segment. And we basically talk about she has a, she got a facelift. We could tell. And then we also talk about Paige. And how powerful of a moment that was. I'm not going to lie. I wish they would have focused more on this segment, Paige segment, than they did. They kind of brushed over it just a little bit, a little bit more less to my liking um, because then Giselle and Candace kind of got into it and so it didn't really stick the way I wanted to but um, we do find out though within the segment that Mia and Jacqueline are closer than ever which I hope that means Jacqueline will be on the show again as either a friend of or full time because we're going to need someone to replace some of these ladies um, you know because I'm hoping there's more they're leaving. It better not just be Candace and Robin. I'm going to need one, at least one to two more spots gone. Yeah. One to two more spots. Especially the person at the end of this play. Neneka, I don't know. Neneka spoke up more than Ashley did during this reunion. So I forgot Ashley was even there for the most part. But anyway. So then Candace and Giselle um, start kind of going back and forth because Giselle states that um, because Candace made a comment during the pay, after the pave um, episode that she was discussing about Giselle really kind of being part of the episode since she pretty much alluded to her husband um, sexually assaulting her, which she did. And this whole entire time, can't, um, Giselle's trying to play some semantics. It's like, you didn't say the words, but you're alluding to it. And <clears throat> Robin's trying to gaslight her. Mia... I don't think Mia is trying to gaslight Candace, but I think Mia is trying to be kind of the mediator with it a little bit because it is a pretty strong conversation to say that. And what Candace said was strong. Um, but based off of what Giselle has been doing for the past two seasons now, I get why Candace said what she said. Anyway, um, because it's tied to like basically what Giselle said that St that um, Chris made her go into the bedroom. That's what she said in the confessional. And Giselle the whole entire time saying that her story hasn't changed. The story hasn't changed. She never said that. She never said that. It's literally on the tape. And, and <laughs> Candace is just like, am I bugging? Like. It was on tape, like, and I'm just like, wow, it really was on tape. 
And so while Giselle and Candace are going back and forth, of course, Robin, Giselle's Batman, had to like, I mean, Giselle's Robin, because you know, they're Batman and Robin, literally, um, ch are chiming in too. And then the death that, Death threat comments kind of make them go back and forth too. That Giselle said because Giselle is trying to blame Candace on about her getting death threats, and it's like the reach be reaching. That's a reach, and I love that Candace called out. She's like, "Look, everyone on the show gets death threats. I'm sorry that happened to you based off what I said, but everyone on the show gets death threats." Which facts? And then Giselle names all the mean things, name, name calling mean things that Candace has ever said to her. And Candace is like, okay, and? <laughs> I'm sorry. Candace stay on her neck. Neck? <laughs> sorry. Not today, Satan. Not today, neck. For those who don't like Candace, y'all are going to miss her one-liners because she's one of the only people on this show that can read and we're getting, and she's gone. Your favorites can't read, okay? And I'm not talking about reading a book. Your favorites cannot read. And part of Shade 101 is to be able to be a orator. Just saying. Side note, why Giselle and... um. Candace are going back and forth. Robin chimes in and tries to call out the fact that Chris was cheating on Candace. And this is based off of that story that came out of this crazy woman who claimed that um, Chris slept with her. And it was debunked so many ways because it definitely was clear that this woman was not well. And literally, as Robin's trying to like beat this point down that this is a thing and try to say that um, the screenshots are Chris's ping, um, pretty much all the ladies outside of Giselle, Ashley, and Robin defend Candace and say, girl, that was debunked. They either sell as debunked. Annette, Annette is like, no, that lady literally has no credibility. Um, Mia's like, that lady is crazy. <laughs> and then even like, Andy's like, it was literally debunk debunked that that did not happen. And so they have like no defense. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And so basically after that, it kind of made... It made Giselle take accountability. So Giselle actually had to apologize again. Um, and you, reluctantly so. She did not want to apologize. It was very clear. And so she took some accountability, even though it was forced. And Candace took some accountability on her end. Because Candace did apologizing for calling her a white woman. <laughs> Sorry. It was wrong, but it was funny. She did apologize for that. And also apologized for the fact that she got death threats. So there was some progress, but not really. Um, and then from there, we go on to Karen and Robin. And Robin still thinks that she is doing something when she's going back and forth with Karen. But Karen also can read her down too. The thing that kills me about Robin and Giselle, neither of them can read. And how many, you've been on this show for eight seasons and you ain't went to your gay favorites or none of them to get some reading lessons and learn how to read? None have, have done it. And so Karen is just like, pretty much got her together. She's like, girl, <laughs> don't try it. Um, because... Robin tried to state that she hasn't arrived at the fence. She actually takes a side. And, Ro and Karen's like, no, I try my hardest to ride the fence. But right is right and wrong is wrong. When you basically make it impossible for me to ride the fence, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I'm just like. The fact, 
and, and, and that's a fact. Giselle makes it more, makes it a little bit easier for Karen to ride the fence versus Robin. Because Robin's logic don't, it, it leads with nothing. Like, she just isn't, it's her, it's, it's, it really is Robin's time to go. And we can tell why she, this, if anyone who, someone who doesn't really care for Robin or someone who wanted to know why Robin's no longer on the show, this reunion part one was all you need to see. You can see why she is not going to be back on the show. And not because she quit. She had terrible, this was not a good reunion for her. It was not. Um, they pretty much exposed that they were the problems. And we know Andy's not going to get rid of Giselle. But your friend here, she can go. Anyway. So then they go on to break, to lunch. And then um, from there, we, um, while they're at lunch, Mia FaceTimes Inc., um, because Ink's been calling her, her boyfriend. And Gordon's there, too, during the lunch break. And he says hi to Ink. And they seem to, all three of them seem to be in a good place together. And so then from there on, the lunch break is over with. And we go on to the Mia segment. And um, we find out that Mia moved into an apartment in D.C. Gordon lives in Charlotte, but he's going to be re relocating across the street from Mia. Um, probably for the, ch for the children. And then, right before the episode ends, Wendy's like, hey, I'm, I'm not trying to be messy, but I'm going to chime in. Gordon mentioned that Ink showed up to your house trying to get Jeremiah because he still thinks Jeremiah's his kid. And Mia's like, yeah. He does still think Jeremiah is his kid. And that's where the reunion part one ends. Girl, this Mia and Gordon thing is kind of what saved it. Because the rest of it was just a whole bunch of nothing. I'll be honest. Um, although I did love that. I love that Mia was on the right side of history in this part one. Karen showed up and was like, no, no, no. We're not going to do this to Candace. I love that there was a plan to have Candace's back. And even Neneka had Candace's back. And she sat on that other side of that couch. It literally was like, it was literally Giselle and Robin against the rest of the ladies. Because Ashley is, you know, Ashley's scary, so she was on mute. Ciao. So we'll see how part two goes, but I am happy that this season's going to wrap up, and I'm happy that there's going to be a shake-up, and hopefully we can make Potomac great again. <laughs> I know that emblem, I know that saying's not a good saying. But it's kind of fitting because it's kind of close to the D.C. area. I don't know. But yeah. Anyway, that does conclude um, this review. And I'm tired. Child, it's almost, it's 1230. Forgive me, I'm tired. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, a.k.a. The Mel Nice Couch Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.